okay. This is uh, part two of the uh, video I did the other day about Bob Lazar and his uh, encounters at the Area 51 base. <clears throat> and I had a few issues. I, I've watched the interview multiple times um, to see if I could find any chinks in the armor. Uh, just trying to see if I can see any fallacies in the story. So, this is a more in-depth from yesterday. So, here is my thing. So, Bob Lazar, the, one of the first things about the Joe Rogan interview that really sparked my attention was Bob talks about gravitational fields. And propulsions that is pushing the aircraft up. And his friend that he was working with on this project was very eager to get another partner with him. Because I guess he hasn't had a partner in a while. So as Bob is a new employee, this guy is very ecstatic to show him um, this, this spacecraft uh, or... This archaeological find, I should say. Um, Joe Rogan asks him about the gravitational fields, right? And this is my thing. If you ask this guy, how did it feel when you touched the gravitational field? I would think they would expand more like how did it feel on your hands how did it feel on your fingertips did like did, did it feel very solid did like like if you would have how much pressure did you put on trying to touch the touch the spacecraft and your hand couldn't penetrate that barrier like i just wish joe would have um, you know, I know the guy had a headache and things of that nature. And, you know, these are gravitational fields. And the field was a heart shaped, uh, Bob Lazar said. Um, it was more of a heart shaped uh, gravitational field. So, I don't know. Um, I don't know why it's a heart shape rather than the shapes we normally see with electromagnetic waves but you know we can go on about that forever so yeah i didn't i didn't understand that you know um i would like to know how how did it was it cold was it hot how did the gravitational propulsion feel on your flesh um and i know that he said that the uh, arc react, uh, there was a reactor the size of a basketball. And if you guys don't know what a reactor is, um, it's basically to control nuclear fission. And nuclear fission is when uh, atoms smash together and the atom hits the nucleus. And other particles um, in that process violently are created once that nuclear fission is once those uh, particles smash into each other and uranium is created, which is fuel for nuclear, uh, which is nuclear fuel. And so if you guys don't know how uranium is created, that's how it's created through nuclear fission. And the reactor controls the processes of those. And he said that there was a guy who died or a couple of people who died trying to cut into the reactor with a plasma cutter. And he even said that that wasn't a really scientific way to find... That wasn't, a, that, that wasn't the most scientific way to actually analyze something, cutting straight into it. You know, it's like, man, you could have... And then he said he didn't know what the... I mean, I'm a, I'm, I'm a curious person. So it's like he didn't know the material. I would have got my fingers and tried to scratch the material. 
I mean, and it's like, oh, you can't ask questions. Like, I don't understand, like, how could you invite this guy, which is the guy, Bob Lazar, to this Area 51 with all these high-tech secrets to show him something, and he can't ask questions. Like, I don't know. Like, that that's so, that doesn't make no sense to me. Like, I understand the secrecy, but it, it really, really doesn't make any sense to me. Um, also, they're saying that um, these spacecrafts come from uh, Zeta Reticula, uh, which is a star system that you can see when you're in the southern hemisphere. Now, if you want to see Zeta Reticula, uh, an app I suggest you download, and it costs money, and I'm not sure if it's on, I have an Apple phone, so I'm not sure if it's on Android. I'm pretty sure it, it should be, but it's called Sky Guide, and you can actually see uh, Zeta Reticula, and I mean, it's just something to see, you know, you can see the star system, it's pretty cool. Um, it is real. It was found by the French in the 1700s. And you can, I think you can see it with the naked eye as well. So I'm, I'm guessing these are the origins. Now, this place is relatively um, close to us. It's only 30 light years away. And now, me personally, I would think with the Hubble telescope, the Hubble telescope has seen, can see 10 to the negative 15 billion times for, like, so we should be able to, to hone in on this place and see if there's any activity going on or, you know, I mean, they try to use uh, infrared, but, you know, there's a lot of infrared gases and, um, uh, things radiating from certain surfaces and gases emitting from comets and asteroids and things of that nature so it's kind of hard to distinguish where the heat is coming from so i guess that's not the best all the all the way best method but and uh there were nine spacecraft i don't know i, I have a couple questions man i have a couple questions so he also said that the interior There were arc, arc ray, uh, arch, um, uh, arc ways, as you can see in this picture. These were arcs, and one of the arcs, there was a transparent type of screen that can display. You know, guys, listen. I love space. I love science. I love technology. I want there to be something else. I, I really do. More than anybody, probably. Um, I, I, I'm a fa very fascinated with space. Very fascinated with physics. Uh, and really smart people. Einstein, uh, Nikola Tesla, um, Neil deGrasse Tyson, uh, Lawrence Krass, Brian Cox. These are all like physicists. And these are all guys I look up to. And if you want to learn about physics, you can go on YouTube. And there are tons of MIT lessons. And you can also go to Brightly as well. It's kind of why I've learned what I've learned in my understanding of physics. And I'm guessing this is the reactor. And there was a and it's on a plate hooked up hooked up. To, uh, that goes to the bottom, and I guess the top of the uh, the top right here is the navigation that was assumed by Bob Lazar. You know, hey, beats me, probably true, but I don't know if Bob is really telling the truth, man. I have to say that I have to. When when you, listen, forget the rest of the show. Let's just let's just stop at the gravitational field around the spacecraft 
and Bob puts his hands on this field. How how far was your hand from the field away from the spacecraft? Was there any distortion around the spacecraft? Was it hot? Was it cold? Like these are things that he he didn't say um which makes like I'm I, I don't look when I'm telling the story, I'm sorry. I tell detail, especially if it's a really weird story or a weird dream, listen, I'm putting details like, yo, I, I, I touched the spacecraft and like my hands couldn't even go through it. It pushed my hand and I felt like this cool heat. Like I want more. Like like did your did your did your flesh push it? That's what I'm saying. You you hear how I'm trying to express myself like I don't know I don't know I don't know if I can believe this I don't know and another thing which makes me not believe it is it's our government that has it I mean we're finding out that they lied on Osama bin bin Laden like he wasn't the guy who orchestrated 9-11 you know I mean, everybody says it was Iran. Um, you went in and you took out Gaddafi. They, the government went in and took out. Um, they went and took out Saddam Hussein, and the, it comes out that they are, they lied. Like they genuinely lied. The, the Tuskegee experiment. They sent groups of black uh, pilots on a dummy mission. So I mean. Operation Paperclip. I mean, it's a lot of... Oh, man. I don't know if I can believe this technology exists. I don't know if I can believe that this technology exists. I don't believe that there are no questions you can ask. I don't I don't believe that. Like, if you're, if you're working on this, he never said what they really asked him to do. Oh, well, your job is to find out as much information as possible and walk away no no that's not how real interactions work like everybody who's worked at a job i don't care if you worked at walmart if your manager comes up to you and say listen i want you to work at al6 this is what i want you to do like if you if there are no buttons in there if there if there are no buttons no screens control panels what are you doing in there you don't know the material. You like what are you doing inside of the spacecraft, bro? Seriously, what are you doing? If you don't know what the material is made out of, I mean, you don't know how to read the you know, really the reactor works. You don't know I mean, you're not giving enough details, man. I need more details than just You know, this is some cool stuff. I would love to believe this. And I, I can't even believe the, the pilots that flew the, uh, I think the F-18 jet. Let me see. F-18 jet. Let's see. How? Uh, let's see. Top speed. I mean, the guy, the guy said he's seen... Oh, I don't know, guys. I, I really don't know. 1,190 miles an hour. So let's do this. Let's do this. Um, Let's check out the Iron Man, the old Iron Man trailer. And where in the... In the trailer, you know, like I said in my last video, you know, the people who are navigating, you know, obviously this, obviously this is in humans' hands, right? Obviously. How are you, if you put a laser on a wall, you will not know where the laser is, you, 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 I mean, you can't pinpoint where the laser really is. Before your eyes can conceive 
where it is, right? Here you go. I thought this was I thought this was pretty dope. Okay, he does a barrel roll. The amount of force, the amount of G's put on this man's body, you cannot tell me there is a human being flying these spacecrafts at these. When Remember, Bob said that they go to high altitudes, very high altitudes in the mountains doing you know, the strenuous maneuvers with this aircraft, you're not doing that. You're not doing that. Sorry. Come on. Come. Listen, bro. That's basically what that pilot said he's seen. I don't believe it, man. I don't believe it. The government is lying. Um, they're trying to distract people, you know. And I know we hear this a lot. Oh, the government is distracting conspiracy theory. All oh, look, they're trying to distract people from, you know, things that are going on, things that are that are impacting our lives. So they want to they want to try to go and just pull something out of the hat. Like, listen, that's very disingenuous of you know the government which you know they don't care and and of bob if he's lying about this you know i don't want to call this guy a liar you know he seems like he's stressed out about this and you know being under stress is a serious thing you know depression and mental health is a serious thing so you know i i i cannot believe this technology is available and if it is available it's not in our hands and if it's in our hands, like, you know, I'm sorry. I, I just don't believe this. Um, hey, you guys leave your thoughts in the comments. Let me know what you think. Do you think his story is real? What do you think about when he touched the, the um, gravitational field? What do you think about that? How do you feel about that? Um... Do you think he should have explained the feeling? I mean, I, I feel like if you want to be, if you want to be believed, you're gonna, you're gonna, man. Every, every goddamn detail matters. Every goddamn bloody detail matters. And that's tough. This is the Egyptian accuser. Thank you guys for watching. Leave your comments below on what you think. Thank you.